Our night skies change all the time. Some stars become brighter, some stars become dimmer, and some stars slowly move across the night skies. But by looking at the night skies long enough, we can also start discovering some other mysteries. One such mystery is what the scientists refer to as vanishing stars. Stars that kind of just disappear. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to reflect back on this idea of vanishing stars that I first mentioned approximately two years ago, because since then the researchers behind this particular study have also discovered a lot more of these unusual vanishing stars. Stars that for one reason or another seem to have completely disappeared in the last few decades. And although initially the scientists discovered only 100 of these stars, with the help of the citizen science project known as the VASCO network, the network that you can learn more about from this paper right here and that you can also join yourself, they now have identified approximately 800 of these unusual objects. Or technically, they are not there anymore, so I guess missing objects with many such disappearances currently not having any good explanation at all. It's as if something either covered the star, or if it just shut down its activity and became something entirely different. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of the potential explanations, and I'm also going to show you where you can join the citizen project yourself if you want to participate in it as well. The project that several scientists discussed during this SETI talk right here, mostly because this also represents one of the most exciting projects in regards to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Naturally because one of the potential explanations here is that this could be some sort of a megastructure just hiding the star itself. But that's of course not the only and not even the best explanation so far. The best explanations are still natural explanations. So what exactly is going on here? Well, naturally, we know that stars can disappear for many different reasons. For example, a supernova. But during a typical supernova, you would also expect a lot of other emissions, but also possibly some sort of a leftover, some sort of a nebular cloud that should be detectable afterwards. Yet, as of now, as of today, none of these objects investigated in the study here had anything left behind. There were no extra emissions, there was no additional radiation, it's as if the objects just sort of vanished. Okay, well, what can possibly do this? So, let's start right here. Where do these pictures actually come from? Well, the original pictures, the original images, were taken by the US Navy. The United States Naval Observatory, to be more exact. And this was done um, several decades ago, back in the late 40s, in the early 50s. In case you were not aware, the US Navy uses what's known as astrometry for extremely precise navigation reasons. And so, US Navy has some of the most advanced capabilities when it comes to observing the stars and taking various pictures of various objects. And so, over the years, they've taken a lot of pictures of various stars. But a few decades later, several other surveys started to take more pictures with one such observatory being pan stars. Now these were obviously not done for military reasons, this was mostly done for research reasons. And you can actually even access all of this data yourself because all of this is publicly available. And so the scientists behind this study wanted to figure out, well, has our night skies changed dramatically? They wanted to see if any of the objects possibly appeared or disappeared. And this could be obviously for many different reasons and could be explained in a lot of different natural ways. But to their surprise, it didn't take them long to start discovering a lot of these vanishing objects. Stars or some bright objects that were there in the 50s but were not there in 2000s, approximately 5 decades later. With the total number of observed and detected objects increasing more and more, as more people join their project and help them discover even more of these vanishing stars. Although, okay, let's do a bit of a correction here. I call them stars, but it's not necessarily stars at all. We don't actually know what was seen by the Navy back in the 50s. Obviously, they could be stars, but they could also have been various types of transients, various types of bright, sudden events that only stay bright for some time, possibly a year or two years, and then disappear completely. Now, this could be obviously some sort of a supernova, but a more likely explanation here would be just a regular nova. Essentially a thermonuclear reaction um, on the surface of some sort of white dwarf. Now, these happen all the time and we actually detect them pretty much on a weekly basis. And these do produce very bright emissions that could have actually been captured back in the 50s and would not be present right now. 
But the problem here is the number of these objects discovered so far. It's very, very unlikely that several hundred of these objects would be visible in the 50s and not visible today. So Nova by itself does not explain the origin of all of these objects. Maybe some of them, but definitely not all of them. Now one way to prove if this is a Nova is to actually possibly see these objects again. A lot of Nova happened many times. Many of them are recurrent Nova. So if suddenly one of these objects reappears again, we'll know for a fact that this is exactly what happened here. At the same time, maybe this is just some sort of a really bright flare. For example, from an extremely active red dwarf. We know that many red dwarfs, including the nearby Proxima Centauri, are actually very active. They produce tons and tons of flares that temporarily increase their brightness. And so this could be a potential explanation for some of these vanishing objects. It's not that they vanished, it's just at that particular time in the 50s, they were much brighter than usual. But once again, the numbers here don't really add up. The recent analysis identified over 800 of these objects already. And having 800 flares happening at the same time does not explain all of these objects. The other intriguing explanation here involves what's known as the Collapsar. Essentially when a somewhat massive red supergiant sort of skips the supernova part and collapses into the black hole directly, which would cause the star to disappear completely. For example, one such Collapsar was detected in one of the galaxies nearby. But normally there are at least some leftovers that we can hypothetically detect uh, from these particular systems. It could either be the emissions from the previous interaction with the gas in the star system, or some other unusual signs that should still be detected even after 50, 60, 70 years. And so one potential explanation here would be to double check these areas to see what other emissions we can detect. So far this has not been done because the scientists only started doing this not so long ago. At the same time, this could be some sort of a variable star. But the fact that variable stars generally return back to original brightness means that we should be able to see these stars again. At the moment, none of them seem to be visible. Also, for a star to completely disappear, it would have to be some really extreme version of a variable star. So this, right now, is the least likely explanation. Okay, how about some other unusual events, other transients? Here, the scientists speculate that maybe fast radio bursts or gamma ray bursts could be responsible for producing some of these unusual observations based on a mechanism that we don't really understand just yet. Since we know that gamma ray bursts and fast radio bursts do happen quite a lot, in terms of numbers that could definitely be the case. But because these transients usually happen extremely fast, it's very difficult to explain why they would appear like stationary stars in these initial surveys. So this is definitely not the best explanation either. And so even though after the burst there might be some sort of an afterglow, at the moment the scientists are not entirely sure if this is actually possible at all. And so even though the most likely explanation is still some sort of a nova or supernova, just the sheer numbers of the objects discovered so far really make this uh, a somewhat difficult explanation to accept. As a matter of fact, most of the collapsars or any other similar supernova only happen approximately three times per century in a typical galaxy. So discovering them in just a few years would be almost impossible. And so at the moment there's no one good explanation for all of this. And as I mentioned before, after examining approximately 12,000 candidates, they've officially identified approximately 800 of these objects. And so what is it? Is it some sort of an alien civilization covering stars, making them invisible? Is it some sort of a strange black hole phenomenon that we cannot currently explain? Or is it something entirely different? Well, as I mentioned, at the moment there's really almost no way to answer this. They seem to be there, they seem to be vanishing, but at the moment we don't even know if it's all the same phenomenon or if it's actually a completely different phenomenon that seem to be visible in a similar way. More importantly, they're not even nearly done yet. So they've examined 12,000 candidates, but in total approximately 150,000 candidates were discovered in the initial report. That means that less than 10% of candidates were examined so far. So much more is to be done, which also implies that many more such objects will probably be discovered in future studies. But as I mentioned, this is a citizen science project, which means that you can also join if you'd like to participate. So how do you join and what exactly do you need to do? Well, the website, the link is in the description below. And just like with a lot of other citizen science projects, this is basically a mini game. You can check out the tutorial to find out how all of this works and what exactly you have to do. But in short, you're given two pictures. 
one on the left and one on the right. And this is the Old Navy pictures, this is the more recent pictures from various surveys. And basically you're trying to find out if the object in the picture is still there or if the image is bad in some way and cannot be used, if the object has moved or if it vanished. Or maybe something else happened entirely. So in this particular case the object is definitely still there. So some objects like this one right here are not going to be stars, they're going to be galaxies. These ones are relatively easy to identify and relatively easy to confirm that this is still there as well. And that's basically kind of all you have to do. Now, it's not a super fun game, but it definitely helps the scientists to go through those 150,000 candidates. But how do you know if the object truly disappeared? Well, here, after a few minutes of doing this, I seem to have found one. So notice this part right here. And if we combine it with the other picture, notice how it seems to be no longer there. Now, it's possible that it moved somewhere, but for all we know, it's a vanishing object. So I'm marking this as something that vanished. And to be honest, this is probably one of the most exciting projects right now, investigating something that nobody has a good explanation for. Obviously, it could be aliens, but it could also be some really unusual phenomena we never considered, something that might have an explanation in the next few years. And because all of this only started a couple of years ago, at the moment, this is definitely one of the most exciting astronomical projects out there. Something that I'm pretty sure we'll be talking more about in the next few years. So since there's really no explanation and nothing else to mention here other than maybe participate in this project, there's really nothing else I can add. It's a really intriguing mystery, probably one of the biggest mysteries out there, but a really intriguing discovery that I'm sure a lot of scientists will be talking about in the next 10 or so years. And so once we have some answers or maybe some other updates, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.